come again to brandylibrary.tv, Brand Ambassador Series. You know this one very well. Charlie, I'm nice glad having you here. Gavin, it's a pleasure to be here, surrounded by all these very fine brandies, cognacs, and of course, single malts as well. Well, you are selling quite a bit um, of Macallan here at Brandy Library. I bet many people want your position. It is indeed probably one of the best jobs I can, I can think of. Um, for me, I was a big Macallan fan even before I got this job. Um, a number of stories that perhaps sort of make it destiny for me to be in this position. Um, and it's, honor to, it's an honor to represent the brand and to work with the people, especially when I'm visiting the distillery over in Scotland, actually meeting the people who are making this very unique and special single malt in front of us. But Macallan is something big because we see lots of advertising. The marketing behind Macallan is huge. It's an ideal gift. It's a rich scotch. I don't know if this is number one in value. Um, people know it yet don't really know what's behind. So you need, to, you need to tell us how it's made and why it tastes very different. Sure, it's a very good question. Here in America, actually, Macallan is it's one of our biggest markets. Um, so obviously there's gonna be a lot of priority to give you the full range of Macallan expressions that we possibly can. But mm -hmm. behind the actual label, behind all the sort of marketing, what really counts is actually the liquid inside the bottle. That's what people judge us on that is what people expect in terms of our quality. Um, I'm going to attack you right away. Sure. Um, why is it so expensive? And why do we have so many expressions now when it used to be so simple uh, with only one nine? Very good question. The reason that Macallan is at the premium end of the, of the single malt market is that due to a number of reasons, perhaps the, the most important is our, is our cask, our wood policy. Um, as a lot of you know, um, the maturation process is a very important part of the whiskey making process. And right. we actually, at the Macallan, did a, su a survey about, it was in 1999, which came out with the findings that over 60% of all the flavor and aroma in your Scotch whiskey comes from that interaction with the oak casks mm -hmm. and the spirit inside. Um, so even though our accountants don't like it, we do not cut any corners um, and we not only hand pick and hand craft all our casks, but we invest heavily in them. We invest currently $20 million um, each year in our wood, our oak casks alone. And the reason that perhaps ours uh, in terms of the quality will be um, up there in terms of the price is because we use the vast majority of uh, European sherry season casks. Um, and what I, mean, what, what I mean by that is we use uh, Predominantly, we use oak from, uh, from northern Spain in Galicia. We then ship it down to southern Spain, to Jerez, where we air dry it for two years. We then commission the, the sherry houses, sherry bodegas, to fill our casks with their dry Oloroso sherry wine for a further two years. Um, that sort of uh, interaction with the sherry and the oak, even before we put our whiskey in those casks, gives us a very sort of rich, full body sort of dried fruit spicy note which you would experience in the sherry oak range of the Macallan. And just, just to give you an idea of a price, um, us Scots, we love a good deal. Um, and we also love the law here in America that states that the, the bourbon uh, barrel can only be used once. Um, so about 85% of all the casks in the Scotch whiskey industry are ex-American bourbon casks, which we, the Scottish industry, probably pick up for about $100 each. Mm -hmm. The sherry season casks, which is what Macallan is known for, they probably cost us about $1,000 for each cask. So that's, oh, that's why Macallan... That's 10 times the price. Exactly. And as a, as a company, the Macallan owns 65% of all European sherry season casks. Oh, wow. so. But so you're saying that you, you, you own the wood and you send it to the cooperage facility. And so, so you own the forests? We don't own the forests. We buy the forest. Basically, for every tree that is cut down, we plant another two. So not only is it going to be sustainable for the environment, but also for, oh, for future good. Macallan casks. Um, so it comes from northern Spain. Um, but we also, for the fine oak range, which we'll talk about more later, right. we actually use some American oak, which is much lighter in color, much, right. much harder, which we actually uniquely ship across to Spain and also season that uh, mm -hmm. with, with sherry wine as well. Um, because we selfishly own the vast majority of the European sherry season casks in the industry, Macallan, 65%, as a company, the Edrington Group that owns Macallan and our sister distillery, 
Highland Park, we own 90% of all the European sherry season cask in the industry. So as a result, we have the luxury, and for the Macallan, it's 80% of our casks of first fill, um, right. which then brings us to the, to the next point, because the first time you use a barrel, you get much more extraction of a color, but also the flavors and aromas as well. Um, so that means that we can use natural color in our whiskies as well. So whereas other distilleries might use artificial caramel coloring to create the consistency for each expression in terms of color, it makes our whiskey maker's job that much harder, mm -hmm. but he only uses natural color because we have the luxury of using the vast majority, 80% is first fill casks, which is when you get much more extraction of the flavors, but also the color right, as so well. Right, so no spirit grade caramel added in None at all. None. Um, so we actually have at Macallan a strain of barley, um, which is unique to us and exclusive to us, called the minstrel uh, variety. Um, can only be uh, used for the Macallan. Um, so that is another sort of, it's much further sort of uh, at the beginning of the process, um, but that's the start of what makes us unique and different right. in the single malt uh, industry. Um, as I said, those three ingredients of single malt, barley, water, and yeast, the same ingredients as beer, for all those beer aficionados out there, we ferment it, um, and then we take it those stages further and distill it twice. And once we have the wash, as we call it, mm -hmm. we put it into the wash still. Um, and what I mean by still, this is the process where we're actually going to separate the alcohol right. from the water. As alcohol is a much lower boiling point, it evaporates first. So we use copper stills. Um, a, they are very sort of uh, malleable. We can create nice rounded shapes. Um, they conduct heat very well, so they're quick to heat up. Um, but a lot of people don't realize um, that the copper stills, they actually act as a catalyst as well. So not, on, not only do they enhance the, the sort of fruity, estuary notes that we enjoy in a single malt, mm -hmm. that they inhibit the undesirable sort of sulfur notes mm -hmm. that we wouldn't enjoy in our single malts. Um, and at the Macallan, we have very small stills. We call these our curiously small stills um, because we know that the copper acts as a, as a catalyst. The larger surface area in contact with the spirit because they're very small, mm -hmm. they're more sort of richer, fruitier sort of notes coming through. We also have very short necks as well. Um, so when the alcohol is evaporating off, um, sometimes you have very tall sort of necks, right. but heavier notes can actually um, condense and fall back mm. into the wash. Yeah, um, we, have, we have very short necks, so we can actually collect the very heavy, rich notes um, that comes out in the Macallan spirit after the maturation process as well. Um, but I mean, they're, they're very sort of they're some of the smallest stills, um, certainly the smallest in Space Side and in the industry as well, mm -hmm. um, but actually quite famous in Scotland. And don't let me sort of uh, tell you that, uh, ask the, the Bank of Scotland. Um, you'll actually see if you go to Scotland, on the back of the Scottish £10 note there, you'll see the Macallan right. stills there. So if you ever fly into Edinburgh Glasgow Airport, just give this to a taxi driver. You might need a few of these and say, take me to, the, to these <laughs> stills and you'll get to the Macallan distillery. Uh, what's the relationship between Macallan and peat? Uh, we don't use any peat uh, during that drying process. You're talking about peat. Basically, especially on the west coast and the islands um, where it's very windy, if we just trace back back to sort of when whiskey was first made, they needed a, a fuel to heat the kilns to dry the barley. Mm -hmm. On the west coast especially, very windy, hardly any trees. So they had to find another source of fuel to heat those kilns. And they used peat, which you literally just dig out the ground, you dry, and when you actually light it, it's very flammable. So when you put it underneath the kiln, the actual pungent, heavy smoke actually permeates into the barley. And that's what gives it a very sort of smoky, peaty style um, to whiskey, but, but not, but not, but not the Macallan, no, we don't use any peat in the Macallan. There's no expression of Macallan with peat? Not with peat. You might find some of the older um, styles of Macallan, we're talking sort of uh, decades old, mm -hmm. you might get more of that sort of smokier um, aspect to right. it um, due to the, sort of the different sort of processes mm -hmm. that were made then, but uh, traditionally Macallan is not a peaty or smoky style of whiskey. Um, if you want to eat with Macallan, what would you do? It depends which range you're going to use. Um, so basically when you're pairing a, a single malt with some food, you're going to want to match the different sort of flavor profiles in there. So for example, if we take our fine oak range because it's a bit lighter in style, um, you'd probably match that with lighter sort of styles of food, whether that would be perhaps sort of fish, perhaps sort of maybe a sort of a light sort of chicken dish. Um, but if you wanted to match one of the sherry oak um, sort of range of Macallans, I would pick some very rich sort of uh, maybe gamey, 
sort mm. of meats uh, with rich sort of sauces, which are going to counteract the, the rich sort of dried fruit spicy notes in the sherry oak range. Um, so if I'm in Scotland and, I, and I'm and I'm asking for a, a goat curry, yeah, or haggis perhaps. Or haggis. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, actually, haggis is is can be very good. It is. Just don't ask what's in it. It is delicious. But then I'd probably steer you more towards the sherry oak because it's Angus is very rich, or uh -huh. a curry, a goat curry, very right. rich. You want to balance it with the rich sort of notes in the Sherry Oak Macallan range. What's your ideal pairing? Or if I say Macallan 18, what would you love to eat with Macallan 18? I actually have a very sweet tooth. So because Macallan 18 Sherry Oak has very rich sort of dried fruit, sort of sweet, spicy notes, I quite often pair that with a dessert, a pudding, perhaps maybe a. Mm -hmm. Uh, creme caramel, um, sort of rich in flavour, sort of with that crusted uh, sugar on top. I think we should probably try the difference between the fine oak and the sherry oak range. Oh, I, agree. Um, I agree. I'd recommend we start on the fine oak because it's a bit of a lighter style and then move on to the richer style, the sherry oak. Makes sense. So first of all, I'll give you some of the fine oak 15 year olds. Who came up with that name, fine oak? Fine oak, um, I think came back from a, actually our whiskey maker. Um, Bob Dalgano. Um, we wanted to, to bring out an expression that was a different style um, for Macallan uh, consumers, whether it was mm -hmm. different time of year, different time of day, depending who you're with, um, you might have a different preference for a lighter style or a more richer style. Um, the fine oak range is actually what I would sort of steer the new sort of Scotch drinker to, the new sort of single malt drinker to. It's mu much more accessible. Um, the 15 year old fine oak is actually my wife's favourite um, at the moment. Um, so it's much more accessible takes to water and ice that much better. Mm -hmm. Light, but refreshing, but still has the complex flavors. Um, do you drink as a couple? We do, we actually met um, over Macallan. Uh, Are you ready for this? When you decide over in the headquarters or in the cellars of Macallan that you'll come up with that fine oak line, mm -hmm. how do you all of a sudden produce a 21 year old fine oak? It means that you've been aging already something differently for 21 years? Exactly, exactly. It's a very good question. You've got to reveal some secrets here. Of course. Uh, I'll reveal what secrets I can. Um, basically, I mean, I don't know of many industries where you're having to forecast decades in advance what A, demand's going to be like. Um, and as we all know, it's very high throughout the world, especially here in America and Asia as well. So A, we're having to keep up with demand in terms um, of actual sort of making our whiskey. I mean, it's, uh, it's a good problem to have, but it means that uh, we're actually working 24 hours a day, seven days a week as well, producing the actual spirit. But that, the fruit of that work is not going to be seen for another 12, 15, 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, so the whiskey maker at the moment, a lot of the whiskey he is bottling was made by his predecessor, and he's making whiskey which is going to be bottled by his predecessor, and his, his, his successor, sorry. Um, but there's always going to be a, lot, a bit of experimentation, um, whether it's using different types of cask, mm -hmm. and they will be collecting dust at the back of the warehouses, and it's up to the current whiskey maker to, to make sort of decisions on where he's going to take perhaps a new line, a new expression, for example, the Fine Oak Range, which came out in 2005. Um, but that initial idea would have been thought of by his predecessor, thinking, mm -hmm. okay, we're known for having the European, the sherry season cask, um, why don't we try a bit of maturation with the ex-American bourbon cast right. as well? So further down the line, we can have different choices, different options in terms of where the consumer, where the demand is coming from. Um, Therefore, what's going on now in the cellars that we don't know about? There's a lot that even I don't know what's going on <laughs> in the cellars at the moment. We currently have about 180,000 casks maturing at any one time. And oh. I've been, been to the distillery, obviously I've been to most of the warehouses, um, but there are some certain areas that I haven't seen, and I know that there are going to be certain little secrets mm -hmm. um, that the whiskey, current whiskey maker is sort of keeping back for future sort of decades, future generations. Who presides over that destiny? Um, at the moment, it's our master um, whiskey maker, Bob Dalgano. Mm 